U.S. ambassador to the U.N. Bill Richardson has known Suu Kyi for 30 years and told CNN that she's changed as she's become out of touch, a politician afraid of the military. Richardson recently resigned from an international advisory panel for Rakhine State. But Aung San Suu Kyi has long recognized that she is a politician and clarified what that meant to her when Robert H. Lieberman interviewed her for a film. It's called, um, they call it Myanmar. Take a listen. Do you think of yourself as a politician? Yes, of course I'm a politician. It strikes me that you've gone beyond that and that... You know, I think politicians who think that they've gone beyond being politicians are very dangerous. That's where authoritarianism comes in. I'm just an ordinary politician. Just an ordinary politician. Now, joining me now, the director of that film, Robert H. Lieberman. He's also Hi. a senior lecturer at Cornell University. Sir, thank you so much for joining us here at CNN. You have a pretty good sense of Aung San Suu Kyi. You first met her when she was released from house arrest. You interviewed her for an extended period of time and uh, a few occasions after that. From what you know of her and her character, are you surprised by how she has handled the Rohingya crisis? Well, she's just a politician, as she says, but it turns out she's a bad politician. Um, I think that the story is getting it all wrong because the focus is on Aung San Suu Kyi. She's the person now, who, the person we loved, and now she's the person we love to hate. Uh, it turns out that she doesn't really have a lot of power. The only thing she has is perhaps the ability to do some moral persuasion. She should speak out. She hasn't spoken out. If I was one of her advisors, I would have had her fly directly to the Rakhine. Uh, so I don't think you should be looking at Aung San Suu Kyi. I can give you some insights into her. By the way, Bill Richardson resigned. I don't know if you know what the blow-up was about. Uh, he raised the issue of the two young Reuters reporters who uh, have been imprisoned. They face up to 14 years in jail because they were investigating a mass grave in the Rakhine. And Suu Kyi doesn't suffer fools, but she also doesn't apparently suffer criticism. I, can I switch the whole program and move to the bigger picture? Would you allow me to do that? Well, before you do that, the I just want to ask, because you said something really interesting a moment ago, that there is this expectation for Aung San Suu Kyi to speak out because she is a Nobel Peace Prize winner, because she is this icon of democracy. Um, are you saying that she, she is a politician? She hasn't changed. So are you saying that it's She's not who she Aung always Suu Kyi, was? But this is That's this right. is the reality yes. of power in Myanmar, of what she has to do to toe the line with the military. No, I think she is the same person she always was, and that in the West we have viewed her with the lens that we want to view her as, and we've built her up on a pedestal, and now we've knocked her down. I mean, I do have some sympathy for her. She's in a very tight spot. She, uh, you know, she's got a powerful military, you know, at her back. You know, if she, you know, makes a wrong turn, she's in trouble. Look, uh, I think the power is being held by the military. They control all the resources. They control essentially the military, the police, the, uh, 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 the civil service, the intelligence service. Uh, they're calling the shots. And what's happened is there were some attacks on police stations that occurred in the Rakhine. And uh, they're almost understandable. And the military has overreacted by far. And so we have a situation now where things have just spun out of control. There is misinformation apparently on both sides. Uh, we have, I don't know what the numbers are, I thought 750,000, whatever it is, right. three quarters of right. a million human beings sitting in Bangladesh. Uh, right. Suu As Chi, you said, the situation the has spun out of control, right? I mean, this was a police crackdown, a military crackdown that went too far, resulted in the Rohingya crisis, over 800,000 Rohingya refugees. Um, and now we're in a situation where the international community has condemned Aung San Suu Kyi. But the greater point has, has urged her to condemn the treatment of the Rohingya. And yet she is a leader who, despite her moral authority, refuses to even say and utter the word Rohingya. I mean, given all this international pressure, do you think she would listen based on what you know of her? I think she's a very headstrong woman. I, we, you know, we, you know, we loved her because a she's very good looking. She's Oxford educated, uh, but you know, she is just a politician, 
and uh, she's playing to the Burmese majority. Um, you know, this is a very complicated situation. I wish I had more than five minutes. If you, you know, uh, we made a film, they call it Myanmar. I could make another movie, you know, they call her Aung San Suu Kyi. But again, this is not the, the real story. She can only come out and say something. It's the military that controls everything. And the military is talking, and the government, whatever you want to call it, is talking about, you know, international terrorists. Well, what they're going to do by escalating the situation is there is a real fear that they're going to bring in the international jihadists into the mix. Uh, so I think we should forget Aung San Suu Kyi for the time being. You know, people feel bad. She got a Nobel Prize. Well, you know, tough beans. Uh, focus on the bigger problem. Focus on the Myanmar government. By the way, Myanmar is suffering, you know, tourism is down. If you want to stay in, in Yangon, hotel prices are half of what they were before. Mm. You know, this what, is, what's you really out, going on? Very nuanced stories, multiple repercussions on Myanmar's, not just international stand, but economy, as you point out. Um, you mentioned the possibility of doing a follow-up film, you know, just the story of Aung San Suu Kyi. Um, uh, th th I that was, you to do that just was a that. joke. We thank you for that <laughs> and for sharing, yeah, your thoughts with us about her. Um, and uh, I hope to talk again soon. Right, but um, you know what this is? Us live. What was that? Yeah, can I continue? Uh, you know what this really is? This is tribalism, essentially. It's something that's occurring all around the world. It's, you know, leadership splitting people. You've even seen it in the United States, this kind of tribalism. And there's hate speech coming out of, you know, out of, out of Myanmar. And particularly, there's a leading monk who has said something to the effect, lecturing the military, that, you know, these Muslims are not, you know, quite real people. And so this is a Absolutely. worldwide phenomenon. And it really. is precisely because you point out that tribalism that's taking place, that it's not just an issue with the military or Aung San Suu Kyi, but an entire nation almost is in denial over what's happening to the Rohingya. Unfortunately, so we're going to have to leave it at that. Robert Lieberman reporting or joining us live from New York. Thank you so much. Take care.